Good morning, Judith. Good morning, Sonia. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Welcome to the Coaches Cup podcast. I'm Sonia Green from soniagreencoaching.com. And I'm Judith Fender with the No BS Weight Loss Program. I just realized I do not have us. There we go. On the right view. I was like, why am I looking at you this way? It looks different. (laughs) (laughs) For those of you who are listening and not looking on our YouTube channel, you are missing a gorgeous bouquet of roses on Judith's table. And I'll let her tell you a little bit about those. Oh, yeah. So, well, uh, the 20th of November was my birthday. And so that's, we're recording two days after my birthday. So these, uh, I have 53 roses. There are 50 white roses. White roses are my favorite. They're my preferred rose and, um, three red roses. And they're from my mom and her husband, Jean. And I think they do listen to us on the YouTube channel. So awesome. Hopefully they can jump on here and see them. And, um, I was actually coaching yesterday. I was telling you earlier, I was coaching when they dropped them by and didn't get a chance to run out and hug their neck. Oh. Their but there well, they are. Well, they are beautiful. Yes, they are. Just Thank like you. just like their daughter, right? Right. That's right. <laughs> I know. All right. Well, today we are talking about a topic that um I don't, I don't know how popular this will be hearing it, but it's really a topic that gets me excited and it's how to fail. (laughs) Right. I'm with you. It gets me excited too. Yeah. So um, you all may be curious about that, but if you hang with us, you will figure out why we get so excited about it. Mm -hmm. So first I want to start with the definition of failure because I love this definition and it really it changed everything for me when I started thinking about failure this way. Failure is simply omitting a required or expected action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that is so simple, right? There's something that needs to be done that hasn't been done yet. And, and we can fix that. Like I was, I was thinking about this. So my mind immediately went to, to cooking <laughs> and, you know, have you ever made something and you left out the salt? Of course. And, you know, everybody tastes it and they're like, mm. well, if, if you think about failure this way, failure is creating something, a, a recipe and leaving out the salt. But you don't throw it out, right? Mm -hmm. What do you do? Salt it. Yeah, you add some salt. And if we look at our failure like that, the only difference between failure and success is adding the salt. Mm -hmm. How much more willing would we be to go into failure? I mean, we don't always know it's salt that we that we left out. You know, maybe it's, I, my daughter has a favorite taco soup, chicken taco soup recipe Yum. and, and we made it last year sometime and we were like, it's just not right. It's just, it's missing what I, we couldn't figure it out. And finally I figured out it's missing oregano, mm. which is a strange thing for me to think about adding to a taco soup recipe. Yeah. But once we figured that out, it was like, oh, okay, it's back to delicious. (laughs) Yeah, That's, that's all failure is. is Well, I'm going to spin off what you're saying about the salt, because in my notes I have here that most people don't achieve their dreams because they're afraid of failure. So if we just use that salt story and say, because, because you're afraid of leaving out the salt. Yeah. What? What are you saying? It's insane. I'm not going to cook because I'm afraid I'm going to leave out the salt (laughs) and the oregano. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What you're saying. I'm not going to show up. I'm not going to do this. So, so think about listeners. We want you to think about things that you have wanted to do in your life. Mm -hmm. 
that you have just, you haven't done because you're afraid of failing. And, you know, it can be so many different things. It can be starting a business. It could be losing weight. What else? Anything comes to mind that that you think of? Oh my gosh. Well, starting a degree program. I'm thinking about decorating my house, but that might, be, <laughs> that might be another story. I need to buy a couch. I have quite a history of failing at buying couches. <laughs> You're just one couch away from success. You just have to find really? the right couch. <laughs> yeah. Failure makes us creative, right? When we, I'm learning through my failure that, you know what? These three chairs that I have that I've pulled from other rooms in the house work pretty darn well right now. And they are, they are working just fine. <laughs> That's all it took, right? That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but it really is that simple when, when you, you start to think about it. So the question becomes, why do we avoid failure? Hmm. Should I, you want me to give it away? Give it away. It's for a feeling. We don't like how it feels. It's a yeah. vibration in our body. That's all. And yeah. what we make it mean, right? It is twofold. It's the feeling. Yeah. And what we make it mean. Yeah. Yeah. Because when we fail, we think about, I don't know. I mean, the, the thoughts that I came up with quickly when I was thinking about this is shame, mm. disappointment, mm -hmm. um, and not feeling like you're not good enough. Not good enough. Those are three that come up really quickly. I'm sure there are plenty of others. Yeah. But we, we fail to get started because we don't want to feel those feelings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because and, our brain, oops, sorry. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. No, because our brains go down the rabbit hole of what we make it mean. Like you're saying, like not mm -hmm. good enough, not worthy. See there, I can't, I told, I knew I couldn't do it. That one, like. I knew I couldn't buy a couch. <laughs> My poor, I should never have said that, but I did. It's the truth. <laughs> um, My poor husband and daughter, they would love a couch in the house. Just going to say that. Um, I have friends who volunteered to come from very far places, Washington state. So she's going to come down here and she's going to put a couch in her horse trailer just for me. <laughs> Well, I would, it down. I would say do it. I think I'm there. <laughs> yeah. No, we're having the same couch drama at our house. We have one. It's just, we just mm -hmm. bought it and it's dreadfully uncomfortable. So yeah, that's why. even after going and trying all of them. So, and they're so expensive. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have, we need to have a podcast on couches, obviously. <laughs> but the point of, you know, of these feelings that we're trying to avoid it like you said it is what we make it mean and we're in charge of that mm -hmm. we get to decide what we make it mean 100 percent. so i want to tell you about one of my recent failures and and i guess i guess this is where uh thought work has gotten me so I, this is a positive story but you may think it's a little strange at first um so I recently had a five day challenge that I held in, in my, uh, in my group for, uh, imposter syndrome. And I had 30 people sign up, which was way more than I expected. It was the first one I'd done. I, it, it exceeded my goal expectations. So I was feeling successful, but then the week, well, it started with kind of a bang because we had a blackout <laughs> in our entire neighborhood right before I was supposed to go live. And my husband tried to get a generator going, bless his sweetheart. And it just, it couldn't come together. So I ended up on my phone sitting in my car for the first live and I lost some people um, like who were, who were coming on. And so after that, and the story I kept telling myself was we just never regained momentum and even though the people were in the group, they weren't really uh, interacting the way that I had hoped they were. So mm -hmm. in my mind, the week ended as a failure. 
because I, they, you know, my expectations hadn't been met that people would get in there and get coached and they would get in there and interact with each other. And so, so it was a failure and I was driving to the grocery store and I was feeling kind of down about it um, because it hadn't gone the way I thought it would. And then I just started laughing because I realized, and I got giddy. I'm not kidding you. I went from feeling badly to feeling giddy and just like a, a sweep because I realized, ah, it's my first failure. <laughs> I'm on my way to figuring this out. I've only got, you know, I don't know how many more, right? I don't know how many more I've got, but it completely turned my thought process because I suddenly went from making it mean I wasn't good enough which I don't know, you know, people are busy. There's so many reasons that there wasn't a lot of engagement, mm -hmm. tons of reasons. People, I had people from all over the world was one of them. So people were in like all the different time zones. Right. That and maybe they, didn't want, maybe they didn't want to be talking. Right. Right. Also, <laughs> we're talking oh, wow. about imposter syndrome and self-worth and people aren't always as you know, willing to talk about that if it's early in their journey. So tons of reasons I was making it all mean I wasn't good enough. But then I just switched that and, and realized, ah, oh, I'm one step closer to succeeding. That is awesome. I love that. And because you are like, it's it is a, I am yeah. yeah. to see it as a positive one. I mean, it feels so much better and it's empowering. Like, because here's the thing exactly. when we show up for ourselves and we know, like expect the failures, expect them and count on them and know yeah. that you are moving to your goal. You are moving closer towards your goal with every failure. It's going to yeah. create more creativity. You're going to have your own back. You're going to, um, create ooh, resilience, right? Yes. Resilience because you're going to, you're not going to be afraid to show up for the next one. Yeah. Because who, who succeeds on the first try anyway? Very few. You know, I, I love that Thomas Edison. I know I've brought it up before. My students hate hearing that example, but I Little love Thomas. that example because he invented, you know, mm -hmm. over a thousand, I don't remember the exact number, but over a thousand different variations of the light bulb before right. he figured out one that worked. Right. I have in my notes right here, like what if he had engaged in um, being confused and not knowing what to do? And what if he had just spun out on that? Yeah. Where would we be? Where yeah. Overwhelmed. Right well, yeah, we'd be in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> you avoid failure. You avoid your success. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, honestly, we could end the podcast right there. Just that mic drop <laughs> moment. Um <laughs> You, but you're never going to succeed if you don't first experience failure. And yet we have this insane expectation that I guess, because we don't see all the hard work that goes into it. It looks easy. If you look at people who have succeeded, you know, we aren't seeing all of the work that went into the, on the back end, all the times they failed, all the times they didn't meet their own expectations, all the times they left out the salt. Mm -hmm. We, we don't see that. We just see their success. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody like Oprah Winfrey, she wasn't an overnight success, mm -mm. but no. it seems like it now. Right. right. The highlight reel. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got to create our own highlight re reel. And it, and then what goes along with all of those is the blooper reel, right? Right. Uh, the best part <laughs> that it's like my favorite, like, right. It's everyone's favorite part. Yeah. Blooper. That's yeah. where everyone shows up and they're authentic and the real, the realness of the moment. Yeah. Hmm. So <laughs> have we convinced you yet that failure is the way to go? <laughs> yeah. Cause we've got more, <laughs> right? I'm flipping the page, flipping the yeah. page. So, um, we were talking earlier, you know, if, if you're future focused, then we know that our failure is going to lead to success. And personally, it's very easy 
to, I guess it's easier for me to fail than it is for me uh, to allow my children to fail. Oh boy. You know, watching that. But yet that's also the perfect example Mm -hmm. of, um, you know, there's that walking example. Yeah. Uh, You you know, the toddler that has to learn, you know, what if they gave up trying to stand and walk? Yeah. Like, but they learn through persistence. They learn resilience. They learn the skill, the creative ways of getting up. Like they learn their process to achieve success. They build their their muscle too. They build the muscle. Yeah. I, I think about, you know, you know, I have chickens and when baby chicks start to hatch, it's very tempting to help them yeah. out of the egg. Do you know if you do that, they probably won't survive? No way. They have to do it themselves. That yes. is, that's intense to think yeah. that, that slow, consistent pecking has a process yeah. for the baby chicks. Yeah, it does. Hmm. And um, I, I was... I don't know, a year or so ago, I was, I was listening to one of Malcolm Gladwell's books. Uh, I cannot remember which one right now, but you know what? I like him so much. I can recommend any of them. If, (laughs) if you're looking for something to read, what? I don't even know if I know who he is. Malcolm Gladwell. Oh, wow. No, he has a wonderful (laughs) podcast called Revisionist History, but he's also a prolific writer. He's a writer for the New Yorker. Okay. There you go. And, um, he he was looking at um how we build resilience and and how failure works in our lives i really should have looked up which book that was before i started talking about this but he talks about how um research has been done and when children lose a parent early Mm -hmm. in their lives they are more likely to um to find great success than children who have had easy lives like ours and you know no don't don't hear me incorrectly here I am not advocating that we be happy when some when a child loses a parent Um, but they build resilience from that Mm -hmm. it's a parent has been omitted if you want to take it from that um from that definition formula yeah yeah a parent has been omitted from the formula and they have to figure out how to get around that yeah and i i will tell you my husband um lost his mother when he was 13 Mm. and he and his brothers had to go and live with uh an aunt and uncle and that was a very um that was an experience that that really built the man he has become today, mm. you know, and, and I, I always think about him when I think about this example, because there's nothing that he can can decide to do that he can't figure out. Yeah. I mean, he rebuilds vehicles, he builds houses, he's a lawyer, <laughs> you know, I can go on and on and on because and I think a lot of it was he had to figure out how to take care of himself at a pretty early age. Right, right. That is such an interesting um, to consider. It's just yeah. an interesting, uh, I don't even thought to consider or, or uh, story to consider. Yeah. So I, I would say, and I know that, listen, I am, I am preaching to myself when I say this, but we are very quick to want to fix our children's lives. Mm-hmm. I can say that as a professor mm-hmm. because I have lots of evidence <laughs> of parents. As a mother, it's, it's, you know, I mean, yeah, we want it to be easy, but maybe we need to step back and let them fail a few times Mm -hmm. in the safety of of their home you know right Right. and um yeah I mean I know that's that's it's difficult I'm a parent I know that (laughs) but uh I'm keeping quiet over here I'm like it is it is it is difficult yeah but so but so needed I think about the chick story 
Mm-hmm. I need to let my little chicks do their own little pecking. Yeah. Let them get out of that eggshell so they can have resilience. And how much easier just, is it to just do your do it yourself? Because you've already figured out the process. Yeah. Yes, so true. So I could just do this for you and it would be easy. But if we do that, if oh we don't let gosh. them fail. There you go. You have me thinking about like, you know, how many times, I mean, I've thought for my clients, like if I, if I could do this for you, I would. Oh, I know. Yeah. You've got to figure it like, but to show someone to be present and be in those moments to let your clients have their failures and show them that it's, that it is purposeful and that it has meaning yeah. that this is a good thing Yeah. to have. Your so failure. you have that moment where you get giddy about something you think is originally thought means I'm not good enough. It means, Ooh, I've got one more under my belt. I'm on my way to success. Right. Right. Um, I'm sorry. I'm going to look through my notes here. I had something about the, um, was it about the self-sabotage? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. We're going to, I want, somehow I'm going to tie this in with weight loss. So y'all bear Do with it. Me. So if you don't show up for yourself, right? You make a plan for your weight loss and you don't show up for yourself. That's failure. But when you show up for yourself and you make a plan and then you work on your thoughts and you try to figure out, you know, what we teach around thought work. Mm-hmm. Um, when you, when you do your discovery worksheets and what you learn, that is a success. You may have failed in the moment, but we're turning this into a success because this is where you learn. This is where you get your discoveries and you figure out your patterns. And so the only time you fail is when you don't show up for yourself, when you just don't come toe to toe on the start finish line and show up. Yeah. Yeah show up. Amen. Right. Amen. I mean, that's, that's it. And remember, you know, sometimes, especially people who are new to thought work, um, they will spend a lot of time coming up with all the reasons that it wasn't their fault. They failed. Mm. Our children do that too. Like, mean because, outside things. Yes, because that's, I think that's what you do. That's the early process. That's the way our brain works. Mm-hmm. We look for reasons that we don't have to feel bad. And if we can blame it on something else, then we can push off <laughs> that <laughs> negative thought, right? It's true. I'm trying to think, what's the last time I've blamed something on outside circumstances? <laughs> It's, it's Which are a all natural, things. yeah, it's a natural part of, of who we are, of being human. Mm-hmm. Um, but real success, like you said, is accepting that I am always in charge of whatever it is, whether right. it's weight loss, you know, whether it's your business, whether it's, I don't, whatever, Raising your kids, raising your children, and, you know, right. that believability in like believability in yourself that you have the capacity to learn through this. Yeah. Believing that your child has the ability to learn through their process. Yeah. Like each of us has our own journey. Each of us is, has our own process to go through. Yes. And, and each of us will have a different, a success that looks different, right? Mm-hmm because we're all at different places. Yeah. We can't, we can't, the worst thing you can do for yourself is to compare yourself to someone else's highlight reel. Did we just talk about that? We, yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> talked about highlight reels versus blooper reels. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That, that, that's the, really the worst thing you can do for yourself because we're all at different phases of the journey. Yeah. And we'll each try a different path. Mm-hmm. You know, I we have different skill sets that we've learned mm-hmm. along the way. We've had different failures and what we've made it mean. And like how many, you know, how many women have you coached? I know I've coached many on, you know, their lifelong dieters. This is yeah. not their first rodeo, but this is the first time they're showing up and figuring it out from an, from an open place and doing, using thought work to get there. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I, that's, I coach myself on that all the time. Oh, same, same. You know, that's my journey is not the necessarily the journey I would have chosen. Um, 
I would have chosen if we're going to, you know, blame, I would have chosen to get my mom's jeans and not have a weight problem, <laughs> you know, but I get to figure this out and figuring it out is going to be a success that has, I, I think it, it will have multiple, you know, ramifications. It'll kind of be like that, um, the ripples in throwing a rock into the water. It's going to mm-hmm. affect lots of different parts of my life because that's, that's one that I have probably worked at more than any other. And me too. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, you know, that's, we get to figure it out. And like you said, only time it's true failure is if we omit and then quit. Omit and quit. Oh my goodness. I love that rhymes. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So anything before we give them their, their homework for this week? Uh, having my notes to look in for the invitation to tap in, look inside. If you fail and try again, I'm not sure I made note of that. Mm-hmm. So check in with yourself, check in with your feeling, what you're making it mean. Yes. Allow yourself to see that this is a good thing. This is happening. This is happening for you. This is, you showed up, you had your own back and it's okay. Yeah. You learn. And you're going to get up, get Mm -hmm. back on that horse. You're Mm -hmm. a, you're a horse person. Get back on that horse and try again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and add a new ingredient, you know, (laughs) that's right. Add some oregano. It always works for me. Yep. Yep. (laughs) so this week we want you well not this week but this we're gonna we're gonna give you some more time than just a week to do this although you could rack them up in a week if you, you want could to rack them up in a week we want you to collect five failures mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. somewhere in your life um whether it be on your weight loss journey whether it be uh career-based whether it be um what else can we, i'm I'm my brain is so into- with your children. That's, oh that's something that that's we've right. been talking about. Um, let go of that with your yeah. young adult children, even your kids at school, like you, oh, yeah. your babies, let them, let them feel oh, that test a couple times. <laughs> We're homeschooling. You know, that hits right now <laughs> with the seven year old. Yeah. <laughs> Parenthood. Let's, let's talk about feeling some failure over that. And it's, it's not, yeah. it's not. Building yeah. their skills, let them build that, their skills. Don't deprive your kids or, or other, your other loved ones in your life yep. from their skill building, from their resilience. Yeah. They can pick their way out of that shell. You just have to step back and let them. Yeah. yeah. So collect five failures and then look at what you're making it mean and, and flip that. Mm-hmm. I love it. All right. Good. Well, until next time, I'm Sonia Green. And I'm Judith Fender. And we invite you, if you haven't yet, to please go and give us a five-star review on YouTube or on iTunes. You can find the Coach's Cup in both of those places. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next week. Bye.